what is up guys so this is going to be my virtual world in-depth deck profile this deck is really really good and i do recommend picking it up i think it's going to be kind of a, a slight meta contender at least in the coming formats it gives me huge orcus vibes because it's got such an insane resource game and it's just really hard for your opponent to deal with like i said before if you get to kind of like turn three four with this deck you're usually in a good position because you'll just be able to outgrind your opponent but anyway moving on so the virtual world cards i play let's start off with the monsters and i play them all at three so that's three of virtual world gg gg three of virtual world my himi lulu three of virtual world roshi lao lao and three of virtual world kirin lili so they all have the same clause which says if this card is in your hand target a virtual world card you control send one virtual world card of a different type to the graveyard and then special summon this card they also have the same clause where they lock you into level or rank three or higher monsters so you have to keep in mind you're probably not going to be link summoning a whole lot with this deck now after using that effect each of these cards will have a secondary effect so um, virtual GG GG will search a card in the end phase. Virtual World My Himi Lulu will search a virtual world instantly. Virtual World Roshi Lao Lao will special summon another virtual world from the graveyard with a different name to the one that you milled. And Virtual World Kirin Lili will send a secondary card to the graveyard after the first one you've sent already. So, all really good effects. Now, obviously, you can see there's a slight weakness because of this. The deck does kind of only have two card combos, but two and three card combos but it's not really a huge problem because they're so efficient i mean it's any two virtual worlds in your hand so similar to crusadia while crusadia for example is like a 2.5 card combo every single card in the deck can be used for that same combo and this applies to virtual world as well what's really nice as well is all of them can mill your spell and your spell searches any virtual world monster so as long as you have two any two they really don't matter you always have your combo because what's always going to happen is you're going to mill the spell search um my himi lulu if you don't have it and then she's gonna search lao lao and then you're gonna get four monsters on field so it's like no matter what route you're using you'll always be able to get to kind of your your end board state now moving on to the spells and traps we're going to be playing sorry not spells and traps moving on to the hand traps we're going to be playing three ash blossom and joyous spring three cyframe gamma and one driver and two effect veil like, those are the only other monsters i play i don't think it's worth playing all of these things like psychic world are just in my opinion i think the deck is really efficient by itself and because it's so good at kind of getting to its own game plan all i really need to do is stop my opponent getting to theirs which is why i want to have as many hand traps and blah 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 things like that as possible Moving on to the Virtual World Spells and Traps, I'm going to be playing three Virtual World City Kowloon, three Virtual World Gate King Long, and three Virtual World Gate Chu Chase. So again, these are all really good spells and traps. Um, Kowloon allows you to place any Virtual World Gate card from your deck face up in your spell and trap zone, and then it applies a secondary effect based on how many Virtual World Gates you control. If you control two or more, your Virtual Worlds gain 200 attack each turn. Or this turn, if it's three or more, send the top three cards in your deck to the graveyard. If it's four, special summon up to four virtual world monsters with different names from your extra deck. So this is a really good card just because it gives you instant access to your both your spell and your trap. And it basically means that having this plus any monster again is full combo. And this really kind of supports what I'm saying about virtual world being so consistent. Essentially, you have a 76% chance of opening full combo in any hand because you have 18 different starters in this deck and you just need to draw two of them. That's why the deck is so good. I'm going to keep saying it really really consistent now moving on you're going to be playing three of virtual gate king long you can banish one virtual card from your graveyard this is effects by the way target a face up monster on the field and negate it then you can banish this from the graveyard add a virtual monster from your deck to your hand then send a card from your hand to the graveyard so a really good card searches a card then sends a card to the graveyard not awful to be honest because you'll often have excess cards in your hand and then the trap has the effect of Target one face up card in the field, shuffle two banish virtual world cards into the deck, then destroy that card. During your main phase, banish this from your graveyard, target one virtual world monster, and then modulate its level by three until the end of the turn. So, again, what I think is really, really strong about this deck is just the fact that every single card I really want to see. This trap is amazing because it already you already have access to that kind of back row removal in the deck. You don't need to waste slots on Cyclones and Twin Twisters and stuff, which means you're never going to be caught blindsided by something like a Mystic Mine. So really, really like this card. Definitely worth playing at three. Now, moving on to the other spells and traps we play, I play three Pot of Desires, one Upstart, one Reborn, one Call by the Grave, one Emergency Teleport 
three Storm Dragons return. So Desires is obvious and that's another reason for all of these three ofs in the deck because I don't really want to lose any of the resources. But you do need that extra draw from Desires. It does help a lot. The upstart because it's upstart. Reborn again, I don't need to explain that or call by the grave and then emergency teleport So emergency teleport I think is an okay card in this deck now The main reason why you play it because it's essentially another copy of a star in your deck It means that if you draw any of the virtual ones plus this you can kind of still get your combo going It's not ideal because it's not you're not gonna have the card in your hand to mill initially You're only gonna get one mill which means your opponent can negate you with one ash Whereas with, if you have two virtual ones in your hand your opponent needs more than one negate to stop you But it's good enough to play death Definitely, in my opinion. Then Storm Dragons Return. So I've been toying with this card and I really like it. I think either this or Call, Call of the Haunted, both of them are really good in this deck. And it's mainly because this deck does banish a lot. So you can kind of abuse that by continuing to bring your virtual world back and then putting it in your hand so you can start again next turn. And it also means that you can bring back your opponent's monsters. One of the really good things about Storm Dragons Returns, like I've said before, is just the fact that you can summon any banished monster, not just your own. Now obviously you're not only you're not only gonna do this if like you want to win the game or if you're against someone like Orcus you want to get rid of a banished card that they're trying to special summon but still a really really good card and I do like Storm Dragon's Return I think it's worth playing this could be replaced for Call of the Haunted though like I say that's just as good of a card or you could just add more hand traps I just have seen quite a bit of success with this now moving on to our extra deck we are going to be playing one Cypher, Frame Lord, Lambda, and one Phoenix. Um, these are the only two Link monsters I play. Phoenix because of back row removal, Lambda because it's very easy to get those Gammas on the field during your turn. Your opponent will negate things, and then you have a Lambda so you can keep using that negate, which is nice. We play one Virtual World Shell Jar Jar. This card is not amazing, but it does kind of remove cards by banishing them. So essentially, if your opponent battles this card, that monster will be banished after the damage calculation it can also protect itself from being destroyed by battle so it's a nice little bit of removal if you do need it but i do rarely go into it we play one dampier vampire sheridan this is an amazing rank six and essentially you can send any card your opponent controls to the graveyard by detaching material and if your opponent's card goes to the graveyard either by battle or card effect you can special summon it to your field so really really good card we play one day escape phoenix feng feng this is a great card that can banish one card on the field and one card in your opponent's graveyard amazing so you can really kind of deplete their resources with this and then also if it's destroyed you can summon two virtual monsters with the same type and attribute attribute from your deck so two really strong effects on this one constella ptolemy mark seven so this card is really good obviously just for bounce bouncing cards off the field utopia beyond so i really like utopia beyond as a rank six mainly because it's very unique disruption so it essentially when it's summoned the attack of all your monsters your opponent controls become zero and this is permanent so the reason why i like this effect is just because i needed some kind of non-target non-destructive removal in addition to the other ones i have because this deck does target a lot but this essentially means that if i use something like dark room no more in conjunction with this or if i deplete my opponent's resources i can bring out utopia beyond reduce the attack of all their monsters and just beat over them which is really really nice we then play two true king of all calamity so obviously this is going to be one of our win conditions negating all monster effects for a turn this card's insanely busted and i expect it to get banned soon and then we're going to be playing one of the newly released divine arts arsenal aa zeus sky thunder so great effect if an exes monster battled this turn you can exes summon this using it as material and then detach two materials from this card send all other cards from the field to the graveyard once per turn if another card you control is destroyed by battle or opponent's card effect detach one card from your hand deck or extract to this card as material so every effect in this card is insane you can actually natively summon this pretty easily obviously because you do have your trap which modulates levels but in general you are going to be summoning this over your GRGR. i think that's usually the best way to get into it sometimes you're going to be using feng feng as well but yeah really really good card and you definitely want to be playing it in this deck then the rest of the extra deck is going to be some synchro monsters so we play one brian act dragon of the ice barrier honestly i've never gone into it i've never really needed to because you do have a lot of different options of removal but it's there because because it bounces cards which isn't bad one omega just in case your gamma goes off and then you want to resolve it into an omega one ravenous crocs or arketis arketis is nice because it gets you a free draw when you summon it and also again just free generic removal and then two of data skate virtual world kayubi sorry shen shen so really good card macro cosmos one on the field then when it declares an attack return a banished monster to the owner's graveyard and then lastly and the best effect during your main phase except the turn this card was sent to the graveyard banish two 
two monsters with your from your graveyard with different original types and attributes special summon this card from your graveyard so all three of these effects are great and this card just coming back over and over again makes it a real problem for your opponent to deal with i really like this card and you really want to get them in rotation as soon as possible very often you'll see me summon both of these cards just for the sake of kind of getting them in the graveyard early on then i can just keep looping them and my opponent just had never has a good kind of outlet to sort out this card because this obviously will provide fuel for your trap as well now moving on to the side deck there's really like i'm gonna keep saying this every single time don't just copy my side deck it's really gonna depend on the format it's really gonna depend on who you are playing against what you are playing against but these are some good options so three nibiru very easy to remove the nibiru token from your opponent's field so i do think nibiru is worth playing in this deck three wing dragon of red dragon of Ross fear mode this deck doesn't need its normal summon it can combo off very easily without its normal summon so i do think fear mode is a great side deck card especially against stuff like dragon link free lightning storm or free evening match for dealing with those back row decks and then three dark reader no more again you have a lot of different kinds of removal so just being able to kind of blanket remove any protection your opponent hands has and then start picking away at their board is going to be something this deck can do really really well so guys that is the deck profile i really really like virtual i definitely think you guys should give this deck a try if you haven't already as usual the deck lists are in the description so just go down there and check it out and i will talk to you all soon peace